numerous strange discoveries have been made on our planet. There are a few unique locations on Earth that contain a significant quantity of those. Africa is one of those places. Africa can be found on this map. The Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean surround Africa, the world's second biggest continent. The equator divides it approximately evenly in half. Physical geography, environment and resources, and human geography in Africa can all be studied separately. The Sahara, the Sahel, the Ethiopian highlands, the savanna, the Swahili coast, the rainforest, the African Great Lakes, and Southern Africa are the continent's eight major physical regions. Some of these regions encompass significant parts of the continent, such as the Sahara and Sahel, while others, such as the Ethiopian highlands and the Great Lakes, are isolated locations. Each of these areas has its own set of animal and plant groups. Development, agriculture, and forestry have destroyed the majority of Africa's original rainforest. Today, Central Africa, in the Congo River Basin, contains 80% of Africa's rainforest. The animal life in Africa's rainforests is diverse. A 6-kilometer or 4-mile patch might hold up to 400 bird species, 150 butterfly species, and 60 amphibian species. African forest elephants, gorillas, the black colobus monkey, and the akepi, a donkey-like relative of the giraffe, are all important mammals in this region of Africa. One of Africa's most aggressive rainforest species is the driver ant. Driver ants crawl across the rainforest floor in columns of up to 20 million and eat everything from deadly millipedes to reptiles and small mammals. The plant population of the African rainforest is much more diversified, with an estimated 8,000 plant species reported. More than 1,100 of these species are endemic, meaning they can be found nowhere else on Earth. Only 10% of the plants in Africa's tropical rainforests have currently been identified. However, besides this the continent Africa continues to reveal new discoveries that shock scientists all around the world. Join us in this video for 7 new terrifying discoveries hidden in Africa. Number 7. Alien-like species of predatory hammerhead worms discovered. One of the unintended consequences of globalization is the spread of invasive plant and animal species. Land flatworms have spread around the world, primarily through the plant trade. Obama Nungar originally from Argentina, Platidmus maniquary from New Guinea, and Bipalium cuants from Southeast Asia are now ubiquitous. An international team led by Professor Jean Lou Justine has described two new hammerhead flatworm species. This is the first investigation of these species, which was described in the open access journal Pier J. Land flatworms prey on soil invertebrates such as earthworms, slugs, and snails. When introduced into a new location, they pose a hazard to soil biodiversity and ecology. Hammerhead flatworms have a widened head and are specialist members of this family. Scientists have described a number of species of hammerhead flatworms based on specimens found from invaded countries rather than their native home. This is true, for example, of the two species discovered in the United States, Bipalium pensylvanicum and Bipalium adventitium, both of which originate in Asia but have not been documented from any Asian country. This new paper describes two new species that follow a similar trend. The study emphasizes the issue of alien species and their potential to become invasive. They are one of the most serious threats to biodiversity, with significant economic consequences. Citizen science, field excursions, macrophotography, classical morphology, and next-generation sequencing in molecular biology were all utilized. Among land flatworms, hammerhead flatworms contain some giants, with one species surpassing one meter in length. However, the new species identified here are minuscule which may explain why they previously went unnoticed by experts. The first novel species was dubbed Humbertium cavitum in honor of the effort done during worldwide pandemic lockdowns and as homage to the victims of COVID-19, according to the authors. It was discovered in two gardens in the Pyrenees Atlantiques in France and in Veneto, Italy. It's little, only 30 millimeters and evenly metallic black, which is unusual for hammerhead flatworms. The flatworms consume small snails, according to genetic tests of their digestive contents. The species is most likely from Asia, and it has the potential to be invasive. The second new species, Diversipapalium maotensis, was discovered solely in Mayotte, a French island in the Mozambique Channel, Indian Ocean. The species is tiny, about 30 millimeters in size and has a stunning green-blue iridescence on a brown background. Genetic analysis, including mitogenomes, revealed that this species is the sister group of all other hammerhead flatworms, making it of particular interest in understanding the evolution of these worms. Its origin could be Madagascar, where it was inadvertently brought to Mayotte by humans at some point in the past. The researchers described the entire mitogenomes of five species of hammerhead flatworms, 
having previously researched the mitogenomes of four species of terrestrial flatworms, complete mitogenomes and other phylogenetic sequences, such as small and large subunit ribosomal RNA, enabled the research team to offer the first molecular investigation of connections among the hammerhead flatworms. These African flatworms are interesting animals and very odd-looking, but we cannot anticipate their effects on the local African ecosystems. What do you guys think about this peculiar creature? Number 6. Giant 18-million-year-old crocodile species Researchers have discovered crocodile species that most likely preyed on early humans. Millions of years ago, gigantic dwarf crocodiles roamed Africa, eager to devour our forefathers. According to a recent study led by the University of Iowa, two new species of crocodiles have been discovered. These crocodiles once roamed East Africa between 18 million and 15 million years ago before going extinct for unknown reasons. Their research was recently published in the anatomical record. The species, known as enormous dwarf crocodiles, is related to dwarf crocodiles seen in Central and Western Africa today. However, unlike their modern relatives, the enormous dwarf crocodiles were significantly larger, hence the name. Dwarf crocodiles rarely grow taller than 4 or 5 feet, but their prehistoric forebears could reach lengths of up to 12 feet, making them one of the most formidable threats to any animals they encountered. These were the most dangerous predators our ancestors had to deal with, says corresponding author Christopher Brachu, a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of Iowa. They were opportunistic predators, like crocodiles today. It would have been extremely dangerous for ancient humans to drink from the river. The new species are Kenyang Mabaconsis and Kenyang T. Chernovi. They had large, conical teeth and short, deep snouts. Instead of opening straight up, like modern crocodiles do, their noses opened slightly up into the front. For the most part, they waited for prey in the forest rather than in the water. They had what looked like this big grin that made them look really happy, but they would bite your face off if you gave them the chance," Brachu says. Kinyang lived in the East Africa Rift Valley, in regions of present-day Kenya, and the early to middle Miocene period, a time when the region was mostly enveloped by trees. Both species, however, appeared to become extinct around 15 million years ago, with the end of the Miocene climatic optimum. Why did they vanish? Brachu argues that climate change has caused less rain to fall in the area. Forests progressively disappeared as a result of reduced rainfall and were replaced by grasslands and mixed savanna woodlands. Kinyang was impacted by the environmental change since it presumably preferred wooded regions for mating and hunting, according to the researchers. Modern dwarf crocodiles are found exclusively in forested wetlands, says Brachu who has studied ancient and modern crocodiles for more than three decades. Loss of habitat may have prompted a major change in the crocodiles found in the area. These same environmental changes have been linked to the rise of the larger bipedal primates that gave rise to modern humans, Brachu adds. Brachu agrees that further research is needed to discover what caused the Kenyan to become extinct, as the researchers are unable to pinpoint when the species went extinct. There is also a gap in the fossil record between Kenyang and other crocodile lineages that appeared around 7 million years ago. Among the newcomers were cousins of the Nile crocodile, which is today located in Kenya. These enormous African dwarf crocs are fascinating creatures. We can be glad about their discovery, but also equally glad they are not around anymore. Number 5. Spectacular new bat species discovered in African Sky Island. A team of researchers led by the American Museum of Natural History and Bat Conservation International identified a new species of a striking orange and black bat in a West African mountain range. The species, which the researchers believe is critically endangered, emphasizes the significance of sub-Saharan Sky Island's bat diversity. The species was just described in the journal American Museum Novitates. In an era of extinction, a discovery like this provides a ray of hope said Winifred Frick, chief scientist at Bat Conservation International and associate research professor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. It's a magnificent creature. It has this bright orange fur, and because it was so different, we realized it hadn't been described previously. It is unusual to discover a new mammal. It's been a childhood ambition of mine. In 2018, Frick and her colleagues were in the Nimba Mountains of Guinea conducting field surveys in natural caves and mining tunnels known as adits that were built in the 1970s and 1980s and have since been colonized by bats. The scientists are working with the local mining business, Society des Mines de Fur de Guinea, to determine which bat species utilize specific adits and when. The International Union for Conservation of Nature lists Lamotte's roundleaf bat, Hippocideros lamotte, as severely endangered and has only ever been reported in the Nimba Mountains. Much of its known population lives in the adits, which are in various phases of collapse and will eventually disappear. While searching for this bat, the researchers discovered something unusual. 
a bat that did not resemble Lamott's round-leaf bat and did not fit the descriptions of any other species known to exist in the area. Later that evening, they enlisted the assistance of American Museum of Natural History curator Nancy Simmons, a bat expert and chair of the museum's Department of Mammalogy. As soon as I saw it, I knew it was something new, said Simmons, the paper's primary author and a member of the Bat Conservation International Board of Directors. Then began the arduous process of documenting and gathering all of the facts required to demonstrate that it is genuinely unlike any other known species. The scientists described the new species, which they named Myotes nimbensis, in recognition of the mountain range in which it is found, using morphological, morphometric, echolocation, and genetic data from different museum collections. The Nimba Mountains are a range of African sky islands, with peaks reaching between 1,600-1,750 meters approximately one mile. As a result, they support an abundance of species, including bats. In addition to the Lamotte's round-leaf bat, Myotes nimbensis could be the second bat species found alone in this mountain range, said John Flanders, director of Endangered Species Interventions at Bat Conservation International. This research is part of an ongoing effort to assist the Nimba mountain bat survival. Bat Conservation International and SMFG have already begun collaborating to construct new tunnels for the Lamoth's roundleaf bat and habitat remote from the mining project. And, while little is known about the population and distribution of Myotes nimbensis, actions like this will almost certainly benefit it. Scientists continue to deliver all kinds of fascinating discoveries from Africa to us. In this case a spectacular looking African bat. We can be glad these bats got discovered and now can be protected to stabilize the local ecosystems in the area. Number 4. Africa's Oldest Human Burial Site Uncovered The discovery of the earliest human burial site yet discovered in Africa by an international team led by numerous CNRS researchers was just published in the journal Nature. Researchers discovered the body of a three-year-old boy, called Antoto, which is the Swahili word for kid, in an excavation pit near Pangayaseti. Kenya, north of Mombasa, and Toto seems to have been buried around 78,000 years ago. The investigation of sediments and the arrangement of the bones revealed that the body had been protected by being wrapped in a perishable shroud, and that the skull had likely rested on another perishable object. Despite the absence of offerings or ochre, both of which are frequent at more modern African burial sites, and Toto's funeral treatment reveals a complicated ceremony that most likely needed the active participation of many members of the child's community. Despite the fact that Entoto was a Homo sapiens, the child's dental morphology, in contrast to that seen in human remains from the same time period, retains certain archaic features that link it to distant African forebears. This appears to support, as has been suggested in recent years, that our species has extraordinarily old and regionally diversified origins in the African continent where it emerged. Scientists can learn a lot from this discovery in Kenya. They continue to expand our knowledge about the culture of early humans living in Africa. Number 3. The Mystery of Namibia's Fairy Circles It's likely that you have heard of Namibia. Africa contains the nation of Namibia. Its neighbors include Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Angola and South Africa. The capital of Namibia is Windhoek. There are an estimated 2.58 million people living there, with Africans making up the majority of the population. Numerous other languages are spoken in the nation. English is the official language, but Ashuambo is the most spoken one. Subsistence farming is the mainstay of Namibia's economy. Since the 1970s, the nation has been a net exporter of uranium ore. In addition to having some tourism, Namibia produces a lot of gemstones along its coast, but also the location of a strange phenomenon that researchers have been trying to understand for close to 50 years. The phenomena is called Namibia's fairy circles and researchers have been mystified by the origins of Namibia's fairy circles. It boiled down to two main hypotheses, Either termites were to blame or plants organized themselves. The grasses inside the fairy circles died immediately after rainfall in the African Namib Desert, according to researchers from the University of Göttingen, but termite activity did not produce the bare patches. Instead, continual monitoring of soil moisture demonstrates that the grasses surrounding the rings reduced the water inside them, which most likely led to the grasses inside the circle's mortality. The research about this discovery in Africa was published recently in the journal Perspectives in Plant Ecology, Evolution, and Systematics. Billions of fairy circles can be discovered between 80 and 140 kilometers from the shore in the Namib. These round holes in the grassland are a few meters wide, and they form a recognized pattern that can be seen for miles around. The scientists examine grasses, their roots and shoots, 
and possible termite root damage during periodic rain occurrences in several desert locales. Termites, small insects that exist in enormous colonies in Africa and all across the planet, have frequently been blamed for the grass's demise. The scientists took considerable effort to analyze the circumstances of dying grasses within fairy circles just after the rainfall that prompted the plant's new growth. Additionally, soil moisture sensors were set in and around the fairy circles to measure soil water content at 30-minute intervals from the dry season of 2020 through the conclusion of the rainy season of 2022. The researchers were able to carefully document how the growth of the new emergent grasses around the circles altered the soil water within and around the circles as a result of this. They studied the differences in water infiltration between the inside and outside of circles in 11 NAMIB locations. The findings demonstrate that roughly 10 days after rainfall, the grasses within the circles began to die, while the majority of the interior area of the circles had no grass germination at all. When the researchers examined the data on soil moisture changes, they discovered that the decline in soil water inside and outside the rings was very modest after the initial rainstorm, when grasses had not yet formed. However, when the surrounding grasses were fully developed, the reduction in soil water after rainfall was very rapid in all locations despite the fact that there were almost no grasses to take the water within the circles. Under the tremendous heat in the African Namib, the grasses are constantly transpiring and losing water. Gets and adds, as a result, they produce soil moisture vacuums around their roots, attracting water. Our findings substantially support previous study that found water in soil diffuses swiftly and horizontally in these sands at lengths larger than 7 meters. By constructing vividly patterned landscapes of evenly spaced fairy circles, the grasses work as ecosystem engineers and directly profit from the water supply offered by the vegetation gaps, gets and adds. In fact, we know similar self-organized vegetation structures from other hard drylands around the world, and in all of those circumstances, the plants had no other chance of survival than by growing precisely in such geometrical forms. This study has significance for understanding comparable ecosystems, particularly in light of climate change because plant self-organization buffers against the deleterious consequences of rising aridification. Number 2. 50,000-year-old social network spanning across Africa A new archaeological study reveals an old link between people 3,000 kilometers away and establishes the first direct link between climatic change and ancient human social behavior. Humans are social beings, yet little is known about when, how, and why distinct populations came together in the past. Answering these issues is critical for understanding the biological and cultural diversity seen in today's human groups. Although DNA is an effective tool for investigating genetic links across people, it cannot address any cultural exchanges that occurred during these early meetings. To shed light on ancient African social networks, scientists from the Max Planck Institute have resorted to an unusual source of information, ostrich eggshell beads. Dr. Jennifer Miller and Yaiming Wang report 50,000 years of population connection and isolation in southern and eastern Africa, driven by changing rainfall patterns. In a new study published in Nature, ostrich eggshell beads are excellent examples of prehistoric social ties. They are the world's oldest totally made ornaments, which means that humans completely altered the shells to generate beads rather than relying on an item's natural size or shape. This substantial shape allows for a wide range of styling options. Because different societies produce distinct designs of beads, the prehistoric accessories allow scholars to trace cultural relationships. It's like following a trail of breadcrumbs, says Miller, lead author of the study. The beads are clues, scattered across time and space, just waiting to be noticed. Miller and Wang compiled the world's biggest database of ostrich eggshell beads to look for indicators of population connection. It contains information from over 1,500 unique beads discovered in 31 sites in southern and eastern Africa over the last 50,000 years. This data collection was a laborious and time-consuming process that took more than a decade. The scientists discovered that humans in eastern and southern Africa were utilizing almost identical ostrich eggshell beads between 50,000 and 33,000 years ago by comparing bead properties such as total diameter, aperture diameter, and shell thickness. The discovery shows that a long-distance social network spanning more than 3,000 kilometers originally linked individuals in the two regions. The findings of this research tell a 50,000-year story about human ties and the tremendous climate shifts that drove people apart in Africa. By documenting varied bead use trajectories over antiquity, the data even provides new insight into variable social strategies between Eastern and Southern Africa. These regional responses illustrate the adaptability of human behavior and demonstrate that there are multiple paths to our species' success. These tiny beads have the potential to disclose huge stories about our past, Miller says. 
We invite other academics to expand on this database and look for evidence of cultural connectedness in new areas. Humans were able to develop far greater social networks in the past than we ever imagined. It is fascinating to think about what else we don't know about our past. Number 1. Giant Blue Eye of Africa in Mauritania The Richat structure, also known as the Sahara's Eye or the Blue Eye of Africa, is a circular geological formation in Mauritania's Sahara Desert near Audain. It is visible from space and measures over 50 kilometers across. It was first assumed to be an asteroid impact structure due to its great circularity. Then it was assumed to be a volcanic explosion structure, which seems implausible given the lack of a dome of Agonia's rock or volcanic rock. However, it is currently assumed that the collapse was caused by a very symmetrical and thoroughly worn geological dome. A third group of researchers believes it was formed when God flooded the earth during Noah's time. However, many people today assume that it was caused by erosion sculpted elevating rock. However, it is still unknown how the Richet structure became nearly round and why the rings are evenly spaced from the center. And new inquiries are being made. Some people are amazed by how closely this edifice resembles Plato's vision of Atlantis. There were two of land and three of water. Plato described the round shape of Atlantis as an impenetrable mud barrier to voyagers sailing from hence to the region of Oceania, and he specified a mountain that protected the city from the north as well as one that embraced a vast plain with an oblong shape in the south. Atlantis is known in Greek as Nessos, or the Atlas Island, so we're talking about a geological structure that could have been Atlantis, right in Africa's Sahara Desert. The giant Sahara Eye is a mysterious fascinating discovery made by scientists in Africa. What do you guys think? Could this be the location of the lost city Atlantis? Tell us in the comments below and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.